Welcome to the Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Technical Education and Research Center. In 2004, a national level institute AMGITA has been started in the field of engineering and technology as per guidelines of All India Council for Technical Education AICTE New Delhi. AMGITA is approved by AICTE New Delhi, Gujarat state and affiliated to Gujarat Technological University Ahmedabad which is also known as GTU our goal is to be a institute of generative ideas so that we remain relevant to our society the amgita has always been an organization on move with continuous effort on improving its processes and to maintain its relevance to the indian science scenario with adding new programs in its programmatic portfolio we strongly believe in overall development of students so for that we provide them a different platform like state level tech fest project fair different sports activity which helps students to teach teamwork and problem solving skills to get physical health benefits boost self esteem and reduce pressure and stress for prove their skills in distinct area welcome to the virtual class of professor gaurang patel of the design of ac machine so up till now we are going through the basic construction detail of induction motor then some of the notation of output equation calculation of main dimension shapes of stator slots and stator slot pitch so when we talking about the induction motor so basically induction motor that is the ac machine or ac motor okay so an ac motor we can say that that is an electric motor driven by an alternating current okay ac that means that is uh, running by that alternating current so the ac motor commonly consists of two basic parts an outside stator having coils supplied with the alternating current to produce a rotating magnetic field okay so and an inside rotor attached to the output shaft producing a second rotating magnetic field or in another word we can say that an induction motor or a synchronous motor is an ac electric motor in which the electric current in the rotor needed to produce torque is obtained by electromagnetic induction from the magnetic field of the stator winding or an induction motor can therefore be made without electrical connection so we see that in the principle that there is no connection when magnetic field is induced in from the stator to the rotor so an induction motor's rotor can be either wound type or squirrel cage type so we already shown that in basics there is two types of rotor in the induction motor there is uh, one that is either it is a squirrel cage type or either it is a wound rotor type okay so today lecture session we are going to learn about this three things okay so those three things are that is first that is the length of main turn then stator depth design and stator co design okay so i just like to discuss uh, regarding the length of main turn before we proceed the equation of that length of main turn okay so length of main turn generally what we consider that is uh, you know that sometimes it is considered as uh, mean length per turn okay so that means mean length per turn is the mean length of winding turn in a coil okay so it is usually referred to by the initials mlt okay so mean length tan that is usually referred by that initials mlt and in some cases the coil is not made of a single wire but it will be made with the multiple turns and a coil former coil former is not always necessary it is always not necessary that coil former 
will be placed over over there okay but maybe but it will may be constructed in a stack of printed circuit layers okay so stack of circuit layer layers that means it is uh, about the rotor in construction of rotor we see that there are a number of layers were there to reduce the eddy current losses when uh, in previous session we already studied that okay so now we will move towards the one by one definition and equation for this given term so first we will discuss the length of main turn okay so over here just a moment okay so for the length of main turn i just okay so that is the first i define that in this given equation for the length of main turn it says that the approximate length of main turn of the winding of an induction motor stators for use on voltage up to 650 volt may be calculated from the following empirical relationships okay so for the approximate length of the induction motor stator or we can consider it is above the 600 and or up to the 650 volt okay so for that the relationship is given by this equation this equation that is the lmts which is lmts is equal to twice l plus 2.3 tau plus 0.24 and over there with values of ln tau are expressed in meter okay and state of winding resistance which is given by that is rs which stands for state of winding resistance is equal to rho into length of mean turn divided by area of stator so that's why we that's sorry that's how we find out the length of mean turn this equation is very important when we are trying to find the design of stator slot okay now next we will see the stator teeth design okay so in stator teeth design just a moment okay so in stator teeth design what we have to see first so here the dimension of the slot determine the value of flux density in the teeth okay or uh, one more thing we have to consider that is a high value of flux density in the teeth is not desirable because it leads to a higher loss uh, sorry higher iron loss and a greater magnetize magnetizing mmf so what it says that high value of flux density okay high value of flux density is not desirable what is the design be, reason behind that high value of flux density in the teeth is not desirable because it leads to a higher iron loss okay because it leads to a higher iron loss okay so why i'm emphasize those this term because this question is repeatedly asked in a viva examination your external examination external examiner can be asked that why we are not desiring the high value of flux density in the stator that stator did so your answer should be it is due to the higher iron loss okay so and due to the higher iron loss there is a greater magnetizing mmf will be there okay so as stated earlier the maximum value of bts okay so the maximum value of
BTS. So BTS stands for flux density. Flux density in stator teeth. Okay. So BTS stands for the flux density in the stator teeth. Okay. So the maximum value of BTS, the mean flux density in stator teeth should not exceed 1.7 Weber per meter, meter square. Okay. So this is the BTS, which is also known as mean flux density, which is also known as mean flux density and the value of bts and the value of bts which not exceed to 1.7 weber per meter square so those things you have to keep in now minimum teeth area per pole okay so that is the minimum teeth area per pole which is given 5m by 1.7 okay which is given 5m by 1.7 and also there is one more equation is one more equation is given for the minimum teeth area per pole okay i will simplify it for the better under better understanding okay over here that is given 5m by 1.7 is equal to ss by p into li into wts okay so that is the number of slots per pole that is the net iron length and there is the width of tooth that is the width of tooth okay i will explain you in detail that is s by p which is considering this term that stands for number of slots per pole number of slots per pole okay then next term which is li that is net iron length net iron length and the last term WTS which is 10 for width of tooth okay so for the calculation of tooth area per pole that is equal to number of slots per pole into net iron length into width of tooth okay or minimum width of stator tooth can be given as that is if we are interested to find WTS that is the minimum that is the width of tooth okay WTS that is a that is stands for the width of tooth so when we are going to find the minimum width of stator tooth we have to consider this equation that is minimum flux density 5m 1.7 into number of slots per pole into net iron length okay so minimum width of stator width we can find with this equation that is wts is equal to 
5m divided by 1.7 into number of state sorry number of slots per pole into net iron length so i hope from this explanation you are able to know the calculation of minimum teeth area per pole okay now next we move towards some of the important terms for the stator design okay so over here the first term that is the main dimension of the slot determine the value of flux density in the teeth that i already explained to you okay second one that is the stator teeth design once the dimension of the slot is fixed the two dimension is also fixed it is but obvious because once you fix the stator teeth design then your dimension of store dimension of the slot is fixed and so that's why the two dimension is also fixed okay and the last one that is the mean value of flux density in the tooth should lie between 1.3 to 1.7 weber per meter okay so now we will move towards the stator co design okay so a uh, stator is basically a stationary part of the motor so and we can say that the stator is the stationary part of the motor's electromagnetic circuit and it is usually consist of either windings or permanent mag so usually on stator wire wrapped around an iron core and connected to a source of alternating current okay when placed on the armature or stator core of a motor so we can say that i will repeat it again what we consider as a stator that is a wire wrapped around an iron core and connected to a source of alternating current when placed on the armature or stator core of a motor so in the diagram we can see that there are different terms are given and this is the figure for the depth of stator core okay so different terms are given over here that is the dcs dss d and d0 okay so over here that is the dcs and it is the distance between this two parameters that is dcs that is the that is stands for the depth of stator core behind the slot okay which is you can see it is the depth of stator core that is the depth of stator core behind the slot then dss that is the depth of stator slot slot we can you can see over here this area we can consider as a depth of stator depth of stator slot okay this do okay that is stands for the outer diameter or outside outside diameter of a stator core lamination okay so you can see it covered the whole circle so it is the outside diameter of stator core lamination and it is the inside diameter of the stator core lamination that this d stands for that okay okay now we will see how the flux through the core is calculated and area of cross section of stator core will going to be calculated okay for that we will uh, go through some of the equation which is very important for the design of depth of stator 
first of all we have to determine area of cross section area of cross section of stator core okay area of cross section of stator core which is equal to 5m by 2 divided by bcs okay okay so what it suggests that area of cross section of stator core is equal to 5m by bcs okay so this term 5m by 2 okay so that's 5m by 2 please understand very carefully because it is very important in terms of design of stator core okay so these terms 5m by 2 states that the flux through core is half the flux per bowl okay you understand this 5m by 2 it states that the flux through core okay the flux through core is half the flux per pole because it is divided by the 2 that is 5 m by 2 which states that flux through core is half the flux per pole and the term bcs the term bcs which is stands for flux density in the stator core which is stands for the flux density in the stator core okay bcs stands for the flux density in the stator where bcs bcs is normally kept within the range of 1.2 to 1.4 weber per meter square okay bcs bcs is generally kept in between 1.2 to 1.4 weber per meter square so if further we need to calculate calculate area of cross section of stator core okay when we calculate the area of cross section of stator core we have to determine the area of cross section of stator core is equal to li into dcs okay li into dcs li that is the mean length of the stator and dcs that is the depth of stator core behind the slot okay i will explain you in detail so we already have the equation for the area of cross section of stator core which is 5m by 2 divided by bcs okay we will just a minute so we have the area of cross section of stator core over here area of cross section of stator core Stetoco is equal to 5m by 2 divided by BCS. Okay. So, and BCS is equal to flux density in the stator core. BCS stands for flux density in the stator core. So, further when we consider area of cross section of stator core <coughs> excuse me when we consider area of cross section of stator core 
that is equal to li into dcs okay so we can also consider this term area of cross section of stator core that is that is equal to li into dcs okay so i just write it down li into dcs where dcs is stand for depth of stator core behind the slot dcs stands for depth of stator core behind the slot so we can write down li into dcs is equal to phi m by 2 divided by bcs okay so when we are only interested to find the value of dcs that is the depth of stator code behind the slot then this equation becomes okay i just write it down the full form of dcs so you can understand it better dcs is equal to depth of stator code behind the left of stator core behind the slot so over here you can say that dc dcs dcs is equal to phi m by 2 divided by li into bcs okay this term going over here so from that you can find the dcs which is depth of stator code so i so i hope you understand very well when you will find the depth of stator core and further this equation becomes for d0 that is the outside diameter of the stator core or you can say that d0 which is stands for outside diameter of stator core lamination okay so d0 that is given for the actual diameter plus 2 dss plus 2 dcs 2 dss plus 2 dcs keep in mind those terms are in suffix of that before later okay so don't confuse with those things okay so d0 that is the that is which stands for outside diameter of stator core lamination is equal to d plus twice dss that is depth of stator stator slot plus twice dcs that is equals to depth of stator core behind the slot okay so that is the dcs and that is the dss okay so finally it will complete with the design of stator with the last equation of the outside diameter of the stator core lamination okay so i hope up till now you will understand all those terms very well i already noted down those terms for your purpose of understanding that is dss there is depth of stator slot dcs depth of stator core behind the slot d0 is equal to outside diameter of stator core lamination which i already explained you in detail okay so i hope you understand all those important terms related 
the, the design of stator windings that is length of uh, mean turn stator design and stator co design okay if, uh, on the basis of that there are so many times examples are asked in gtu examination so those gtu examination examples um, we will learn in the next video lecture so please and uh, learn it carefully whatever i teach in this video lecture session so it will helpful to you throughout all the calculation regarding the design of three phase induction motor stator okay thank you so these are the questions asked in gtu examination Uh, this example was asked in summer 2019 you can see the data a 15 kilowatt 400 volt three phase 50 or 6 pole induction motor okay i will just show you how it was asked it has a diameter of 0.3 meter and the length of core 0.12 meter the number of stator slot is 72 with 20 conductors per slot and the stator is delta connected so what we have to find we have to calculate the value of magnetizing current per phase if the length of air gap is 0.55 m the gap contraction factor is 1.2 assume okay and iron parts it will be as 20 uh, sorry 35% of the air gap mmf and coil span is given 11 slot so these are the data which given in the example and from that we have to calculate the value of magnetizing current in second example you can see we have to find the main dimensions okay number of stator turns per phase and number of stator slots for 25 kilowatt 450 volt 50 hertz to 880 rpm motor is given which is connected in three phase delta okay in assumption is given that specific magnetic loading that is 0.48 weber per meter square specific electric loading that is 21000 area per meter efficiency which is given 88% power factor cos 5 that is given 0.87 and stator winding factor is 0.9451 and l by tau ratio we have to take on 0.7 okay so from those data we have to find the main dimension and number of slate stator turns per phase okay so this kind of example frequently asked in gtu examination we will practice this example in next video lectures